Okay, that's enough of this star. I'm going to take my black arrow, select everything, and hit delete key. Uh, the last one on here is the flare, just quickly. If you have a background color, remember this white doesn't exist back here. This is just emptiness, so you actually have to put, if you want white back there, you have to put a white box back there. So if I take the flare and I put it, you can see that you can start to play with these flare effects. Um, if you really want to get into flares, go for it. The best way to program them is double clicking on the actual flare and then the settings come up here. And you can Google flares if you really want to get into it. I'm not going to go too much more with those. Over here on the menu, you have a straight line. I want you to take that straight line and pull this out. And these are just some of your lines that you can play with. You have just a basic line that you can take out. You have a curved line as well that you guys can play with for designs. We'll make patterns in a moment. And you have a swirl. In here is also um, a grid. But what I like to use the grid for is you can up and down arrows to get less of the grid. Or if you're trying to create something like a grate. Uh, and a bullseye that you won't use too often. I only use the bullseye. I pull it out and I down arrow and side arrow to get rid of the sides. And sometimes I use it as like a target. But not often that you're going to use that sort of stuff. Mostly for the lines in here, just to know where the two line tools are. Okay, the next thing is about organizing shapes. So I'm going to take a couple shapes and we're going to just play with them under this idea of a pattern. All right, three different shapes here. And they always set back to what you last played with them. So if you want them to go back to normal, you have to actually set them back. All right, and I've got a star. All right, then I'm going to go through and add color to the ones that I want. Maybe that one has yellow. Maybe this one has no stroke. Maybe this one is the pink. And with my black arrow, I can select, remember your black arrow. You can select this one. And I will turn this to, I don't know, blue with a fill of green. Voila, beautiful, amazing, I know, just super. So the next thing is the idea of ordering stuff in Illustrator. So Illustrator has layers just like Photoshop does. So it's going to tell me what is above what here on this path here. So it says the star is on top, the green, and so forth because these can be ordered any way you want. If you want to send something back like this star, you can right click on it or control click on it. And there's this thing called a range. So control click and down here you have a range and you can send things forward, back. You can send it all the way to the back and now that shape is behind this shape. So if I want that to come forward, I can control click or right click, arrange, send to front or back. The same thing can just be done over here on your layers though. So on your layers here, you would just go ahead and you could rearrange these. So you can pull that one on top of that one, that one on top of that one. Okay, there are layer groups and you can have more and add new layers here at any time you want with the new layer button, it's the plus, the same thing in Photoshop. Let me just zoom in on that. Once again, that's the new layer button there. You could keep your backgrounds separate from your figures, that sort of thing in layers. Okay, the next topic is um, the idea of combining shapes to make one big shape or making holes in shapes and cutting them out. So what we need for this is called the Pathfinder. What I want you to do is go up to your window and it is called Pathfinder. You gotta find it under there, Pathfinder. And the spelling on that is right here, Pathfinder. And what this does is allows, the first one allows you to unite all your shapes. This one subtracts your shapes. And these ones will do things where they intersect. So to see that, I'm going to take this shape over top of the square. So I've got a triangle and a square. I'm going to drag through the black arrow to select both. And then on the first button, I hit Unite. Now notice there's no more stroke there because I just made one arrow shape. And that arrow shape now can have one major fill. Uh, it can have one pattern, one sort of 
neat thing, green, blue. Okay, one shape, that's the idea. Let's add another shape to that. So maybe I'm going to add a flare over here sort of thing. And I can drag through these two shapes and I can unite them into one. Now it is one logo shape. There you go. A logo for house building. Give me a million dollars. Thanks. Now the next one is going to be the idea of subtracting. All right, so maybe we have uh, this idea of a house with some windows that we're gonna cut out. So I'm gonna take another square in the inside. Now to duplicate a shape in Illustrator, all you do is hold down, you use your black arrow to move it before you move it, before, hold down Option Alt and you can duplicate it. And if you hold down things like shift, it will put it in the same exact spot. So once again, what I did was I held down option and shift, and then I moved it a shape. Oop, I didn't grab it at the time. So shift, alt, make sure it's selected, option, move, and then hit shift at the same time, and it will keep it in the same line. So alt first, then shift, don't let go. Then, if you use this thing called Command D, as in dumb, Command D, it will duplicate the last state that it did. So you could do something like add your windows. Let me grab these all over so I can grab in here. I can take my black arrow and shift click through this stuff. So shift, click, shift, click, shift, click. Keep one, move over, and then I got it in my center. Now to duplicate all these windows again, I would hold down option, pick up this whole row, but notice I picked up the square instead. So I've got to make sure I'm right on it. I'm going to click it first. I'm going to shift click through these again, shift click, shift click, hold down option before you move, and then bring this whole row down, hold down shift, and my whole next row is there. Now if I hit command D again, it duplicates the last state. So this is the sort of repetition that makes Illustrator fun. Now, if I were to grab all of these shapes and go instead minus front from back, I now have a shape that's cut out. So anything behind this, you would still see. So let me put a yellow star back there. And then I'm gonna send the star back. So that would be control click or right click on it on a mouse, arrange, send to back. So now I have the star behind the start cutout of my building, okay? So that's minusing front from back. Let's do it again. Let's minus from this star. So maybe I wanna take out the circle right here, all right? So I can grab these two, drag through, minus front from back. And now I have a hole in that shape. To duplicate things, you can hold down Alt or Option before you move them with a black arrow and it duplicates them. If you want to use Command D, it duplicates the last step over and over again that you did. So when you're creating pattern work, it's really fun. Command Z to go back. So once again, I could take a square and I can use Alt to copy it when I move it with the black arrow, right? Alt, copy, and then Command D will duplicate the copy and the move. So if you want to do something like MC Escher squares. So if I grab all of these and then hold Option and pull up, we're into pattern work, right? The other two are pretty self-explanatory. You can take one square and another square, and then you can grab them, and then the next one is just what's in between it will grab. So if I had two circles and I wanted some sort of auto ellipse, I could grab these two to create that shape, and it will give me what's in between. Or you can do the next one, and it will cut out just what's in between to create 
um, a compound shape. So play with those top four for the shape builders. And then Pathfinder is this one called Divide. And what this one does is if you want to take shapes and kind of separate them, I'm going to use the straight line tool and hold shift to make a straight line. What you can do is you can grab a shape like this and you can divide it. Now divided shapes, you have to uh, right click on it to ungroup it or group it because sometimes these things will get grouped. We'll talk about this more in the future. Um, but this one, I should be able to grab just the top pieces. So once again, I'm grouped because I grabbed just one thing. And what you can do is it's called ungrouping right here in the menu, right click. That way, when you grab part of it, it shouldn't grab the whole entire thing. Now with the black arrow, I'll use my up arrows and I can separate them. Arrows in the keyboard. I'm just moving them up because it's just like a math grid. You're just pushing it up on the X and the Y axis. So I'm using my keys to separate the pieces because I've already made them. It's kind of like the Adidas logo. Okay, thing fun. Let's make some patterns. So I've got a t-shirt here and I first want to bring you into like the custom patterns in Illustrator. So I can fill this in this white here with one of the two pattern choices that they give me in Illustrator. Please never use either of these. These are the most canned patterns, these two, because it's the only two they give you. But if you remember correctly, there's a menu, right? And on the corner of the menu here on the library, right here, you can go to patterns and they have a whole bunch of fun patterns. One they have is just like basic dots. Let's grab another menu out. Uh, another one is my favorite. It has animal skins foliage. And what you'll do is they'll come out here in these tabs and it's stacking together. But you could go in and even drag these live and you've got turtle here. You've got some zebra, peacock feathers. On the basic dots one I had, I can just throw in dot patterns. So if you're gonna use the can profile uh, patterns, at least go in the menu and find them. Once again, underneath the menu, over here under the fill menu. But wouldn't it be more fun to make our own patterns? And that's what I would like you guys to do for classwork, is the idea of practicing some of those shape building things to make a pattern. So I'll show you just a basic one. So you cannot use a pattern within a pattern, meaning you can't have this checkered pattern inside of your pattern to build it. So just basic solid shapes. So I'll just take this circle and I can hold down option alt to duplicate it quick. And then maybe I'm gonna recolor some of the circles. And then maybe, I don't know, this one's gonna be red. And then maybe, I don't know, I wanna cut out a shape out of one of them. So maybe I'll take this star, this star, I don't know, and maybe this star. Don't know what this is gonna look like, right? And maybe just one of them I'm gonna cut out though. So I would do shift click through this, shift click to grab both of them, and then divide one from back. So the idea of the Pathfinder. Let me change the color of this so you can see what I just did. So I've got some stars on top. And this one's a hole through it because I use the Pathfinder. That's the idea. You can create shapes on top or bottom. So I'm gonna grab these, and then I'm gonna go up to our menu up here. And this is under the object menu. It says object. And you're gonna go down to pattern and make. So object, pattern, make. Object, pattern, make. Didn't click it object pattern make. Okay, it's going to switch you into a new window. That's okay. And now you are in the idea of ooh, my thing froze. The idea of a pattern maker. In the pattern maker, you can move things around with a black arrow and it updates them live. You can drag over them and change all the distance around them. 
And you can even remake new live things. So if you want new shapes, you can use Alt to duplicate shapes that are already in there and it will update live. Your pattern over here, you can choose what kind of pattern it is, whether it's a brick pattern, columns, hexagon pattern, okay? And you can do this thing called size to the artwork, which puts the space around it or not. But you can also change the size of the box at any time um, to do it. So once again, let me bring you back into that. You drag through, go to Object, Pattern, Make, enter into this new mode. You can then move things around by dragging them, moving them, change the size with the black arrow. You can change how the patterns work next to each other. And then what you do when you're done is up here on the menu here, I'll get rid of my shapes for a minute. I'm gonna click these out. You have this thing that says save a copy, done and cancel. You can just hit done. And what it will do is it will save it in your swatches. So the last swatch that you have is the pattern that you just made right here. So if I take this star now and I draw a star, I can now use my custom pattern that I built instead of one that they have. So what I want you guys to do is build some custom patterns. Okay, pattern one more time quickly. So the idea that you guys can create any sort of shapes you want. Just remember a pattern can't be within a pattern. It's grabbing my last pattern. So I'm just gonna force this into a color over here. Okay. And then maybe I have a circle shape in my design. And I'm gonna make my circle a different color. You guys could also play with this idea of blending modes and opacity to on shapes. Haven't talked about it yet, but right here next to it has the opacity of shapes as well. And when you double click on opacity, it also has the blending modes that Photoshop has. So you can see what kind of crazy stuff it might do with different set of blending modes. So I'm gonna grab my black arrow and drag through my new pattern, which is pretty ugly, but well, hey, let's try it anyway. I'm gonna go up to Object, Pattern, Make, okay, rearrange how you want, and then you're gonna hit Done. Then, let's go over to my shirt and try it out. So I have this pattern on it now. Now I'm gonna try the pattern that I made and voila, I have my own shirt pattern. Here's my old shirt pattern. Ooh, I'm gonna be famous. You wanna wear that? I like it. Okay, so I want you guys to make two patterns for me and upload them. How are you gonna upload them? Well, you can just make the patterns uh, however you want. You can just do a big square which would probably be easiest or a circle or something with your pattern in it. And then you are gonna save it and put these two patterns that you make on Flickr. And I want you to use all the sort of pathfinders, um, the different colors, patterns, sort of things to work. Remember a pattern can't be within a pattern though, for the pa uh, pattern maker. And to save this, what you would do is you're gonna do the same thing we did before. So file, export, and then we're gonna do save for web legacy like we've been doing in Photoshop. You have to give it pixels this time. So it needs um, <clears throat> to have 2,500 pixels for the largest, just like we always did. So the bigger one is gonna be 2,500, okay? And then that way we know it's gonna be big enough for Flickr. Now notice that there's no background. This is preserving transparency. Oh yeah, and we don't want GIF we want PNGs now mostly. Um, JPEGs are better with pixels. PNG 24s are full color and they keep vector shapes better. So graphics are usually saved in PNG. All right, then I would go ahead and hit save. 
if you want a background to these, you actually have to put a white background, meaning I'd have to put a white square behind this in order for it to read white behind. So if I grab this square and I make sure that it's white, okay, it's in front, so I need to send it back. So I need to right click or um, control click for the trackpad, arrange, send to back. Now it's behind. Now when you save this, file, export, save for web legacy, we can make two of these. Same thing, let's go back to the pixels, 2500 for the biggest. And let's save this as PNG 24. Okay, then I can go ahead and hit save. Choose where you want it, desktop, and then you can save your two patterns to your desktop and upload to Flickr like you have before. All right, that's the first half of this morning's lesson. Second half is a little bit easier, a little bit more fun, a little bit more creative.